Knife throwing is often seen as a deadly and efficient skill for silently taking out an enemy at medium range. Or at least, that's the impression you get from action movies and novels on the subject. And sure, a knife is compact, and throwing it takes little time. So why even bother with close combat? But when you dive into medieval sources and historical texts, it turns out that finding any solid information about knife throwing is surprisingly difficult. At best, you'll find vague mentions mostly in modern books for general readers, like those by George Adams. Some even argue that knife throwing only gained popularity in the 19th century when it became a staple of circus acts. Even today, street fights with knives are sadly common, but a duel of knife throwers. That feels like something straight out of fiction. Humans have been making tools similar to modern knives for tens of thousands of years, starting in the Upper Paleolithic. And around that time, we also started using ranged weapons. Back in the Stone Age, knives were widely used, but people likely realized pretty quickly that throwing them wasn't a great idea. Why? Because you could just attach a straight stick to the blade, turning it into a spear, a weapon with better mass and much improved aerodynamics. For example, a thrown knife weighing around 200 grams travels at a speed of 12 to 14 meters per second. That gives it an energy of about 20 joules. Compare that to a spear. Its initial speed can reach 32 meters per second, and even its average speed of 16 to 20 meters per second, combined with a mass over half a kilogram, delivers over 100 joules of energy. In other words, a spear or dart is essentially a knife that's far more effective, up to five times more powerful, and easier to throw thanks to the shaft. Plus, they fly significantly farther. And during the same Paleolithic period, people invented a tool called a spear thrower, often referred to by the Native American term atlatl. It allowed lighter darts to be thrown at speeds over 40 meters per second. With skill, it was even possible, in some rare cases, to throw them distances exceeding 200 meters. So, strange as it may sound, the knife was never particularly useful as a ranged weapon. There were simply better options. Of course, weapons in the Paleolithic were primarily for hunting, and stone knives were fragile, making it tricky to master throwing techniques. But as humans developed agriculture and animal husbandry, something transformative happened, almost like a chemical reaction or an algorithm. With farming and livestock yielding a surplus, humanity didn't divide the extra resources evenly to raise everyone's quality of life. Instead, a small minority hoarded the surplus, while the majority lived on the bare minimum. This hierarchical structure in a surplus society likely has roots in animal instincts because this minority formed not only in Eurasia, but also in the Americas, where there was no direct contact. To maintain their dominance, these elites often became militarized. And what does this have to do with knife throwing? Quite a bit, actually. Agrarian societies were made up mostly of people who had no military training or combat skills, as you might guess against swords, spears, axes, or heaven maces, Soft, single-layer leather thicker than four millimeters would be practically useless. That's as a material for clothing with some added protective qualities it remains relevant even in the 21st century. Even during the Stone Age, a dart with tip or an arrow was more than enough to take down a bison, buffalo, or even larger prey. This seems to be due to the elasticity of the material, which causes the blade to bounce or twist instead of sinking in, dissipating energy into rotation. A heavier knife, on the other hand, tends to pierce better because it carries more energy, overcoming the material's resistance. But in general, knives, whether against fabric, leather, or metal armor, are not great at penetrating defenses. And a battlefield isn't exactly a place where you can freely move around throwing knives at enemies. Then there's the myth of silencing a sentry. Can a thrown knife cause fatal damage? Sure. Segmented, scale-like armor, referred to as lamellar armor in Latin, incredibly broad category. It includes certain types of Roman legion armor, the gear of Russ's warriors, and the protective gear of Japanese samurai. By the millennium BCE, humanity had developed all main types of armor, including chainmail and solid bronze or steelses. However, there's much more information about every other type of armor than there is about leather armor. To sum it up, Due to the functions of the brain's frontal and temporal lobes, even hitting someone in the eye or piercing the skull doesn't guarantee a quick kill. The same goes for strikes to the chest or back. Scaligrim reasonably concludes that to silently take down a guard with a thrown knife, you'd need skills on par with a comic book superhero. Speaking of skill, or rather, the difficulty of mastering knife throwing, that's another big drawback. Against lightly armored opponents, you could use light, 
slicing strikes by drawing the blade a target. When sharp, even a steel blade lightly gliding against unprotected flesh can inflict sea damage. Actively just pointing the blade forward could hold an enemy at bay. Another key advantage is its size. Despite its overall, carrying a sword and a scabbard is fairly lenient, which with the rise of urban centers, contributed to its popularity as a self-defense. And this is with stationary targets and precise multi-rotation techniques. At seven meters, the winning score usually comes from hitting the bullseye seven times and a larger 20 centimeter zone 14 times. Achieving a perfect score is incredibly rare in this competition. The reason? Performance stress combined with the high level of motor coordination required for throwing. Put simply, hitting a stationary target or predictable pendulum in your backyard is one thing. Doing it under competition pressure, or worse, in real combat, is a whole different story. Looking at historical throwing weapons, darts of various types were by far the most common. They were easy to make and relatively simple to master. You can also find examples of multi-bladed eastern shurikens, which became popular later in history, though their effectiveness was modest. There's a video on this channel specifically about that. There's also the African weapon with the quirky name Hunga Munga, and medieval Europe had some rare throwing tools like the Kreutz von Wolfkreutz cross-shaped weapon and the unusual Herbert's throwing axe. What all these weapons had in common was plenty of sharp edges or points designed to embed into a target. Essentially, if the goal was to cause some kind of damage, typically non-lethal, it was easier to add cutting or piercing elements to increase the chance of a hit, make the weapon simpler to use, and reduce the margin of error in the throw. Now I'm not saying that medieval warriors didn't know about knife throwing or never practiced it, but these were isolated instances that don't point to a well-developed tradition or regular use of combat knife throwing. The difficulty of mastering the skill, the knife's low stopping power, and its short effective range, rarely more than eight meters, make throwing knives a questionable choice for real combat. However, it's a great sport for improving agility and reflexes. Plus, while knives were rarely thrown historically, modern conditions are different. In urban areas or remote forests, an opponent is unlikely to have armor or a shield. The problem, though, is that using this weapon effectively requires high skill, specific distances, and taking the initiative. Let's face it, throwing a knife is more about gifting it to your enemy than, than actually defeating them.